good morning and Salamat Pagi from a very, very, very early Jogjakarta city. This morning our alarm went off at 4.45 but that is with a very good reason because we are about to go somewhere that is very, very famous worldwide and I am about to take you there. It is a five minute walk and we are getting very close. and it's really surprising to me with how many people are outside already everyone is selling their own things everyone is out and about shopping already and for us this is really early but apparently it's normal right, we arrived at the famous place this woman got very very popular through a Netflix documentary actually and she is 79 years old and she is selling a very very famous dessert called Lupus. Everyone comes here early in the morning and she actually sells out before 9 a.m. every morning. So here it is. We are still very early. That is the Lupus where it's all about. It's so famous and there are actually way more things I see. This is so cool. Wow. Do you are Lupis. Only Lupis. Or mix everything. Yeah, we can do mix everything. Mix everything. Yeah. Wow, we did it. We got it now already. This was so quick. This is how it looks like. I am so excited to try this out. This lady got insanely popular through one Netflix documentary, which is wild to me. And the fact that she is 79 years old, it's just epic. So this is what it looks like. We have the lupus here, the rice, and then there's kalapa. I think there's more sugary things actually, and there's a sauce over it. I don't really know exactly what everything is, but I'm just gonna give it a taste test because I am so, so curious why this dish is famous worldwide. There, so there's also loose rice, and then you have the lupus, and a lot of kalapa, which I'm gonna get as well. I am so, so curious. Okay, so here we go. First bite of this dish. And oh my god, it's amazing. Yeah? Yes. Right. Oh, I tried everything. Like a combination of the loose rice and then the lupus and the sauce. This is one of a kind. Like it's literally so good. Mm. Right? Wow. Same. Mm, this caramel sugar. It's mm. so high quality. Now oh. I get it. Oh my god, it gives me like butterflies. I'm in love. I'm in love with this dish. It's so nice. Literally, I understand it. I really get it why everyone comes here. But do you know what this thing is? No, I'm trying it now. Oh, it's really? Yeah. It's okay. It doesn't have that much flavor. But I think the sauce that she has. Whoa, the sauce is 10 out of 10. That's the magic sauce. Mm. <laughs> Real magic sauce. Really. 10 out of 10. You? 10 out of 10. 11. Yeah. 12. To the moon. To the moon. Magic moon. <laughs> Which Johnny literally just took a huge bite. I saw it. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> it is so good. I'm gonna order another one. Really? We're now here. Wow. That's but, how much you love it. Yeah, but I want to try the other one. Wow, this dish blew me away literally so early in the morning and this was so, so good. There's sweetness going on, but not too much sweetness. And that is what I often have in a lot of Indonesian dishes, that it is too sweet. This woman really, really knows what she is doing. It is such high, good quality. And the fun fact is she actually has people working for her. So because she has her hands covered with rice all the time, she cannot pay with people. So she has other people who help her with this. And that's just mind blowing to me. She just got famous because of the high quality. It is epic. 
is so interesting to see. She has a little straw and she uses it to cut the rice cake actually. And it is getting super busy already. We were actually one of the first ones to arrive, but right now you can clearly see how many people there are coming and how famous this place is. And you can also see that they're working with numbers right there. So you have to get a number and wait in line for your order. I've never seen that with a street food stall. And I'm actually so happy for this woman that she achieved so much in this lifetime because she's 79 years old and she's working still very, very hard every morning. We are leaving. We had our amazing dish and we paid as well. It was 10k Indonesian rupiah per plate so that is 60 cents and that's what I also really like is that her prices are not too high because she is so famous she can charge a lot but she's definitely choosing not to which I think is pretty inspirational if you ask me and from this world famous dish we are going to another world famous place which I am going to show you within three two one and we have arrived in Boro Budur Temple. This place has been on my bucket list for a very long time. This is the biggest Buddhist temple in the world and I think this place is pure magic. We just arrived, we had quite a hassle to enter because we had no idea that you need to book tickets in advance to enter this place. There are actually time slots and with every time slot you can only have 150 people. So we didn't know that so there was actually Actually no place for us anymore but luckily people cancelled and we are allowed to go inside and to go to the top the ticket is around 30 euros per person and it is definitely recommended to go all the way to the top because that is where the magic happens was built in the 8th and 9th century that is quite a while ago but what for me is the most interesting fact of all is that this place got mystically abandoned in 1500 no one really knows why and volcanic ash laid a top on it and the jungle also took over so I can only imagine what jungle book vibes actually were here but then in the early 19th century the British governor of Java discovered this place again and he took an interest in having it restored so so while the process revealed Borobudur's treasures, it also exposed it to the elements. Villagers liberated stones for building materials and collectors removed Buddha head and other treasures for private and public collections around the world. But fortunately, eventually this place got restored and it is now part of UNESCO World Heritage, which is perfect. It is time for us to go up there and make our own pilgrimage, which I am super, super excited about because the magic happens at the top, I have been told. So we're gonna see how it is. But what I want to give you guys is that definitely wear light clothes because it is so hot and there's literally no shade whatsoever so you will feel extremely hot and you can see here there is no shade at all so we just got slippers that we need to wear which is definitely interesting i've never had that before they look like this <laughs> super fancy if you ask me new style i hope they're comfortable and then these we can put in the bag that they gave us so i have my shoes on and actually i didn't know but you will be given a group and we have a tour guide as well so every time you buy a ticket you will have a certain time slot and you will be put in a designated group with a guide so that's actually nice that we will have a guide right now what our guide just told the reason why we have these funny slippers is actually to not harm the temple anymore because in the past the busiest day 57,000 people visited in one day and the temple could simply not handle it because the temple is just built with loose rocks they didn't even make use of glue or cement or anything it's just loose rocks piled on each other it's crazy to me the natural cement is like ashes in between the stones we made it inside and now we can start our pilgrimage up our climb it is really hot i was not exaggerating that i would say that it's hot hot 
Okay, so we made it to the first level. Jardine is standing here in the shade. Oh. You okay? Yeah, but I'm so hot. Oh my god. It is really hot. But we made it to the first level. Look here how impressive this is. I literally can't believe it. I'm going to walk around and see what all the statues are about. What's really interesting to me is that the stairs are really high, it's like right? A big workout. It's like a big workout. I didn't expect it because I thought, okay, 29 meters, I can. But the stairs are like, whew. these stairs are actually higher than I thought they would be. As you can see, we are getting higher and higher, and it is getting way more impressive. And here you can see again a Buddha without the hat. That's what I just mentioned that people would use it to put it in museums or something else, which is quite sad, but it also adds like something mystical to it. And the view, I didn't expect that it would be this good. There's even mist over the trees. It is so huge and stunning. Okay, so from the 500 Buddha statues, 200 of them don't have a hat anymore. It's crazy. So close to this place, you have Merapi Mountain, and that is actually the most active volcano in Indonesia. Amazing. one way all the way to the top which i'm very excited about so we reached the last level of this whole building which is called the nirvana level it is the round one and if you ask me the most beautiful level as well because look here you see all the stupas this is literally incredible and there are so many of them and actually they're way bigger than i thought they would be look at this incredible and then there behind me there's the biggest one of all in the middle i think the most impressive thing to me is not only this place but only it is literally surrounded by jungle like this is literally where dreams are made of everything here is lush green and i think that makes this place even way more perfect big big tip is to come here early in the morning because right now it is getting extremely hot and there's no shade so come here early in the morning during sunrise if it's possible and bring a hat because i forgot right it is time to leave i don't think i ever experienced this amount of heat i'm like overheating it's time to go into the shade again and climb these very very steep stairs <laughs> we lost our guide and we're trying to search for the exit ourselves <laughs> and we we're just trying to go out into the entrance and we were like blocking everyone's way and fun fact here where we are walking right now you literally can feel the stones moving because like there's no cement which is quite tricky but everything goes well what's your honest first impression I like it, but it's really touristic. Yeah. It is really beautiful, but I will not go back again. Like we've been here now, Suda, and I will never go at daytime because yeah. we have the first time slot and it's so hot. It's exactly. <sighs> Same for me. I think it's super impressive. It's one of a kind. It's like once in a lifetime, you have to do this. You really have to come here. Would I come back? I'm not really sure because it's like a lot of people, but it's still 100% worth it. Like there's so much history going on. This is so impressive. And I actually really like it. I would give this 8.5 out of 10. I would give it nine if I would come early in the morning. Ooh, ooh. this was so much needed. Strawberry ice cream. Much needed. Much needed. <laughs> We're both very, very overheating. And this ice cream is saving lives. It's so good. This one is 40K, so that's around two euros and 40 cents, but it's worth it. It works. If it works, it works. Oh, We're now walking a little bit in the shade, but there's literally no shade whatsoever. And it works. It is 10 minutes walking to the exit. Okay, we are coming close to the exit. And as always, always, we have the souvenir shops, which is definitely very interesting. Thank you. We're still walking. And I think we're not even at the end of it. There's so many sellers here, but luckily there's shade. That's a good thing. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh yeah, I'm fine. You're good, very good. Good, what's your name? Where do you come from? Blanda. Blanda. Yeah. 
Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Well, okay, we are a few hours later and this hasn't happened to me in a very long time but basically after the temple we kind of collapsed. We were too late for our flight back to Bali. We had to rush so much and we were so tired because of the heat. I think we kind of like got a heat stroke or something and we were sleeping in the car and after that we had to run for our flight, pack our bags like it was such a mess but we made it. Back to Bali, as you can see, I am standing here now with all of my luggage. We are back home, Jakarta. It was such a pleasure to visit this place. I learned so much again about Indonesian history and I loved this place so much. There are still a lot of things that I want to do in Jakarta, which I haven't done right now. So I am gonna come back. I don't know yet when, but I will. So thank you so much for watching this Jakarta series. If you had fun, please do not forget to like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you in my next one. Bye.